G'day everyone, my name is Daniel Judd. Today I'm going to be talking about the Bifid and Trifid ciphers. These are two of the most secure ciphers that can be used without significant computing support. They are both invented by the same guy, who wasn't even really in interested in espionage or the military or whatever, he was just interested in cryptography generally. Felix Delastel. We don't know too much about Felix, except for that he managed to produce a couple of the more interesting classical ciphers that we're talking about. Not just Bifid and Trifid, but also Two Square and Four Square, which we're going to talk about later. We first have to draw up a box called a Polybius Square. Now, this square can be 6x6, six six, but it doesn't need to be. Most people actually prefer a 5x5 five five box, in which Y and Z would be combined. An 8x8 box could also be useful because you could have space for capitals and lowercase letters. You could have a bigger box if you want to accommodate even more letters. It doesn't really matter how big the box is so long as it is actually a square, i.e. that it has the same number of rows and columns. But back to my 6x6 box. I've talked about passwording before, but just as a refresher, you're going to need to leave some working out space here. One spot for the password and underneath you should write in all the possible characters that could fit in your box. Because I'm using a 6x6 box, I've got space for all the letters, then the numerals 0 through to 9. Then write your password in. I'm using password 123 in this case. By the way, don't use this particular password for your Facebook or your email or whatever. It would be a good quick way to get yourself hacked. We're going to use this password and our alphanumeric set to come up with a pseudo random box. But together we've got too many letters and there's a couple of letters that appear twice or even thrice. So we have to eliminate some. We keep the first instance of a letter but cross out any subsequent appearances. So in the password we keep the first S but cross off the second. Then we work our way through the alphanumeric set crossing off the letters that we've already got in the password. P, then A, then S and so on. When we're done, it looks like this. We then take the letters that we haven't crossed off over to our box, starting with the password letters, then the alphanumeric letters. Now we need some working out space for our encryption. A plain text row, and two rows for the coordinates of each of the letters. I'm going to demonstrate this by encoding something simple, so a short word like hello will do. For each of the plain text letters, we have to look up their coordinates in the box. So H is at row 3 and column 4. E is on row 3, column 1, L on row 4, column 2, and same for the next L, O is on row 1, column 5. If you're ever presented with a whole stack of numbers, cryptanalysis tends to be quite easy, so we need to turn these numbers back into letters. The way we achieve this is to go across, circling the numbers into groups of 2. If you get to the end and you need another number, you take the first number from the second line. Make sure you cross it off so that you don't forget that you've already encoded it. Then we continue so that we've got all the numbers in groups of two. If you're guessing that we have to pass these numbers back through, then you're absolutely right. So our first two numbers, 3, 3, row 3, column 3, gives us the letter G. Row 4, column 4, gives us N. Row 1, column 4, gives us W. 1, 2, gives us A. And 2, 5, gives us B. As always, decoding is the same process, but in reverse. So. If we've got FOE3, we need to first break it into numbers. Each letter is going to break into two numbers, so we need to have a little bit more working space for this. Then fill that in with our numbers. F becomes 3, 2, O becomes 1, 5, and so on. We then find a halfway point for our list of numbers. If you've got eight numbers, as in this case, you need to split it into two groups of four. Our first group of numbers will be our row numbers, and our second group of numbers will be our column numbers. Then it's a simple matter of looking up what those numbers translate back into. So 3, 3 becomes G, 2, 1 becomes D, 1, 2 becomes A, and 5, 4 becomes Y. So get A. Triffid is basically the same sort of thing, except instead of using two coordinates, it uses three. B, tree, get it? So we start with three boxes that are three by three. If you wanted to expand it, you could have four boxes that are 4x4, four four, or five that are 5x5, five five, and so on and so on. 
Again, we need some working out space to sort out our password and alphanumeric set. It isn't really numeric this time, but if we are using a larger space than it could be. Again, as with last time, I'm using a simple password or password, and we have to go through crossing off all of our repeated letters. While I'm doing this, if you're wondering what that little dash at the end there, that's a general punctuation mark or sometimes a spot for a space. Then we transfer them up into the boxes. I've decided to go all the way across the row once, but you don't need to. In fact, most people usually fill the first box before continuing to the second. So long as your recipient knows the way that you've done it, it doesn't really matter. Now a simple message and some space for working out. This time we've got space for a box, row, and then column. Fill in the coordinates for each letter going across. So H is in box 2, row 2, then column 1, and so on. Then we go across grouping this time in groups of three. If you get to the end and you need some more numbers, then you take them from the next line just as with last time. Make sure you cross them out. I'm kind of out of space on this screen, so I'm going to take these over to a new screen. Each of these sets of numbers has to be transferred back into letters again, so this becomes our coded message. To decode a message, we first have to translate the letters back into the numbers again. Then we take all of those numbers and we split them into three groups. So I've got 12 numbers, I need to split them into groups of four. Then that first group of four becomes the box, second group of four becomes the row, and the last group becomes the column. Then we translate those coordinates back into letters again. So box one, row two, column three is G and so on. There's nothing stopping people from coming up with a quadrid cipher, which would involve supergroups, then boxes within those supergroups, then rows and columns within those boxes. That would be probably pretty hard to work out, but it would be very secure. See you next time.